Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time. And Lord, we thank you for Bible study. You are with us, in us. And Lord, I plead the precious blood of Jesus on what we speak and what we hear. And in the name of Jesus, I bind every mind-blinding demon. Take your hands off God's people. And Lord, your words, not mine, and your thoughts, and not mine. I pray for clarity of speech. And I pray that you speak from me. Pray through Jesus, my Savior. Amen. Amen. And good evening once again. Thank you for joining Monday Bible Study. It's a wonderful Monday. And we're going to speak and we're going to learn something very, 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 very important from Mark 11, 24. So let's go back to Mark 11. Today, the topic is why faith and then is ask. Ask. Having faith. Ask. Right? And it's a very... Very, very good word, yet a very controversial word. Mm, so, yeah. So let's let's look at Mark 11. I'm opening my Bible along with you. So you open your Bible too. Mark 11. And we're going to look at verse 22 back and go all the way to 24. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. If you read this in the KJV... It says, have faith of God. And for me, it's the same thing because have faith in God and have faith of God. Right? God, Jesus is asking you to have faith in God and take his faith and believe. So, but let's go on. Today, I want to talk about verse 24. For, for assuredly, I say to you, whosoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes. So in your Bible, under, underline, but believes. Does not doubt in his heart, but believes. And the uh, please note the word believes is continuous. It's not believed or, or is not going to believe, but believes as in the present progressive. Believes. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe that those things, those things he says, he didn't say God says, he says he because the H is, is not capital, it's small. So it's a pronoun says he says will be done, believes those things. So God is saying, asking you to say, Jesus is asking. So like, you know, let's look at this verse again and Jesus is putting it into practice. Jesus is putting into practice what he's teaching us. So we'll go back to verse 23 he says for assuredly Mark 11, 23, New King James Version. For assuredly, you see, I say to you. So Jesus is doing the saying and he's asking us to imitate him. Right? Be imitators of God as dear children. So he says, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, whoever can be whoever, praise the Lord for that, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart and does not doubt in his heart. He didn't say does not doubt in his mind. Doubts can come to your mind. Doubts can come to your mind. And it's okay when doubts enter your mind. But he's talking about the heart. And I think maybe in the next session or so, we will talk about the heart. But not today. But don't worry. We will be staying in Mark 11 for a very, very long time. But here I just want to put this out. But does not doubt in his heart. But doubts can come in your mind. And it's it don't feel condemned. If you have doubtful thoughts, what you got to do to those thoughts is tell them to go away in Jesus' name. You got to open the word again and look at the scriptures that tell you that what God has done for you. Amen. So does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. He will have whatever he says. I'm going to read this again. Those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. He will have whatever he said. Nahi. Says. You know, this saying, this faith confession is not a one-time activity. Sunday go, pastor ke saath bola to ho gaya nahi, nahi, aise nahi chalte. Right? It is says. Every time the situation arises and the mountain says, hi, you say, to the mountain, you be removed and be cast into the sea. Mountain says, hi. No, you are removed. 
This is what I said to you. This is what I say to you. Right? So that's why Jesus puts it. He, he will have whatever he says. Not whatever he said. So there are times in my life. I may have to say the same verse confessing. You know, sometimes I confess that verse. Like every two minutes because the doubt is really attacking me. It's telling me what I can't do. It's telling me about my past. And there are things that are troubling me. What I say, right? What I say to the to those doubts and to those thoughts is, this is what the words of the Lord says. Okay, we'll go there. So therefore, again, Jesus is saying in verse 24, therefore, I say to you, that is, I is Jesus. I say to you, see, Jesus is practicing what he's preaching. Amen. Hallelujah. What a wonderful thing. Therefore, I, Jesus says, I, may bol rahe, I say to you, now pay attention to the verse 24. We are going to build off this verse 24. The Lord has kept me camping on verse 24 for the whole week. I have been studying and I, I, my heart is so full. But I, I am looking at the Holy Spirit to give you what is required for this session. And I believe even as I speak, you are getting answers for what you want. Right? So mix your faith in these words. These are not my words. Right? This is what the Lord wants to say to you. He needs a partner. And today, the Lord has chosen me and I have said, yes, Lord, let's partner together. Amen. Therefore, I say to you, I say to you, whatever things, again, Jesus is saying, you ask. So put your name there. Whatever things, Alistair ask. Come on, say, whatever things, Alistair ask. Now put your name. Yes, Alistair is asking. Whatever things, you know, in my Bible, I've in my notes that I showed you last time, I've actually gone there and I've put my name there and I've changed the verse. Like I have taken Philippians 4.13 and I put my name. I don't know if you can see it's very far. I put my name there. I, Alistair, can do all things. You know, we'll come there. So I put my name there and I made it my own personal verse. Through, you know, take, make, take a book if you have. And wherever you have you, you put your name. I use color pens. I put my name. So what happens is every time I'm seeing my name, I know this verse is for me. Right? Because it says I can do it. So I will not go to I can do right now. Hold on, Alistair. Let's come back. Therefore, I say to you, so put your name. If you don't want to dirty your Bible and it's okay, you can get a book, write the name. Right? Therefore, I say to you, put your name. I say to you, Alistair. I say to you. I say to you, put your name, whatever things you ask. And I want to talk on the word ask today. Whatever things you ask. You know, most of the times when we are praying, we are not asking, but we are begging. Religion makes you a beggar. Grace makes you asker. Asker is you ask believing and you put the demand on what the Lord has already done. I have been a father for 14 years, 15 years. Yeah. And none of my children ever begged from me. They have asked. Sometimes they don't even say, please. We have to remind them, where is the golden words? What are, where is your manners? No, but they say, I want this. And, and they'll come back, you know, dad, I told you I wanted this. So they ask, they put a demand because their faith works through love. They know that this man loves them. And we are going to see these verses today because we are going to go to Matthew 7 and see how Jesus used this example that I just used. So ask. So write in your notes, say ask. Again, we'll read whatever things Jesus said you ask. Sometimes we don't ask. But then what are, when you ask, when you pray, your prayer, when you're asking you, when you're talking to the Lord, your prayer, you ask him, Lord, ask him. You know, when you who you ask is the one who is the bigger one. Right. I, I will go to share something is uh, on this last Saturday. I wasn't available to do setup. So I texted brother Ronnie and I said, Ronnie, can you come and help? Now, why I texted Ronnie? Because I know Ronnie is bigger and stronger and he's able to help. So I asked, you know, what happens with asking? Asking comes from a place of relationship. Do you answer I got asking? Ka? Yes or no? Or koi answer nahi aate. Right. So you ask believing. You ask knowing, you ask, and that is what, just as we trust each other, right? God is saying, ask me, mere se bhi to pucho. right? And, and when I asked Brother Ronnie, he said, yes, I'll be available, I'll go help the youth. So you can see whatever things you ask when you pray. If I didn't ask him to go, he wouldn't have gone. I can't blame him because I never asked. Tune pucha hi nahi. 
अरे मुझ तेरे को चाहिए था पूछने का था ना व्यास दिस राइट विसे चाहिए तो पूछ ना अरे तूने पूछा ही नहीं बताया नहीं सेम वे आई थिंक इज ऑलरेडी हैपनिंग इन हेवन एंड वी हैव दिस रिलीजियस थिंग गॉड नोज गॉड नोज यस ही नोज बट ही वांट्स यू टू आस्क राइट ही वांट्स यू टू आस्क एंड माय फेवरेट एग्जांपल इज सिस्टर बिलिंडा सर्विंग अस कॉफी एवरी संडे शी इज आस्किंग अस वी आर आस्किंग हर एंड द कॉफी गेट्स सर्व राइट आस्किंग शी नोज ऑल ऑफ यू नीड कॉफी Sister Belinda does know. She comes with the cup, and with, especially with me, she asks me, "Hello, Alistair, you'll have coffee because I always have it last after I finish doing all the setup, packing up, and everything." And those who come to Sunday church know this happens, right? But she's asking me, and at that moment, I say, "Not now, sister. I'll take it later." You see how it works in the natural. Why it won't work in the spiritual? Don't get spaced out when it comes to the word of God. It's the same thing. So I'm going to say again. Therefore, I say to you, Jesus is saying, whatever you ask when you pray, believe again. Believe that you receive when you pray, Lord. This is my requirement. I'm asking you. You believe that you receive. You don't. You don't start believing when you get it in the hand. If I'm praying for this, this is an eraser. I'm praying for an eraser. and i say lord i ask you for a wonderful eraser i believe i receive it talk as if it is yours i have a wonderful eraser you know i am blessed you know we have this wonderful eraser thank you lord don't tell everybody tell yourself you don't need to tell because you know there are a lot of people who won't believe with you there are a lot of people around you maybe called believers but they will tell you is it the will of god and the will of god is that you have eternal life the will of god is that jesus was sent to die for us and save us and give us eternal life you read the word it says and most is it the will of god let's god's will be done you know these are all prayers that don't work because they do not believe that god loves them they believe that we can ask such a thing that you know heaven will be shaken are kya mang liya yaar and you cannot shake heaven with whatever request you have remember when you are talking you are talking to your father who is the creator of the universe who us as human beings have just started expand uh, exploring he made all of it he made all of it so there is nothing that can face him amen so i'm going ahead of myself let me calm down and come back so whatever things you ask when you pray believe that you receive them and you will me you know this jesus didn't say you may i'm still reading from 1124 mark 1124 new king james version please open your bible and you will have them jesus didn't say you may ye ho sakta hai let me check with father let me check with accounts department na you will again if you read this whatever things you ask when you pray so don't feel shy of asking don't feel condemned of asking religion makes you condemn nahi 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 religion makes you ask like beggars nahi lord only 5 bucks but why and ask ask oh wow right so let's go see some more verses on i am going to show you before i go to ask right whatever examples we did last monday i am going to quickly take you to just one the blind man in matthew 9 and then we go but blind man in matthew 9 28 to 30 i'm going to show you these men 9 28 matthew 9 28 to 30 and we know that you know these two blind men followed him and said son of david have mercy on me in verse and verse 28 when they came into the house and they cried out saying in verse 27 they didn't cry out begging they didn't cry out begging saying that you know they didn't cry out begging they didn't beg they didn't beg they didn't beg they they cried out saying they cried out saying right they didn't beg please lord see begging is look at the sentence son of david have mercy on us that is a prayer right they didn't say please lord if it is your will if it is your will and there is one leper who did that with jesus you know what the lord said it is my will it is my will if lord you are willing he said and the lord said i yes i am willing so god and jesus and the holy spirit are willing to help us right they said son of david have mercy on us and when he had come into the house jesus said to them do you believe i am able to do this they said yes lord see the simple confession of faith 
This is what I wrote in my notes. Let it be done according to your faith. And Jesus is according to your faith, not my faith, not Jesus' faith. Your faith in me. Your faith in Jesus. Your faith. That's why I, when I read the story of blind Bartimaeus, his name is not Bartimaeus actually. Bartimaeus means son of Timaeus. Bar Jonah, son of Jonah. So right, whenever I read the story of Bartimaeus, I always wondered why Jesus asked him, what, what do you want me to do for you? He's blind, Jesus. Jesus wanted to hear him ask him. Jesus said, I may see. And Jesus fulfilled his request. Jesus didn't ask him any four questions. Tell me last when you went to church. He didn't ask these two blind men in Matthew 9. He, he says, do you believe? Oh, that's the only question. Just give me a minute, please. Sorry. So he didn't ask, you know, he didn't ask them any four questions, qualification questions. Do you believe that I am able to do this? All that's the question he's asking us and he's asking everybody. Do you believe I am able to do this? This is the question that we have been studying and reading. Jesus is still saying, do you believe I am? That's why he goes to Mark 11 says, have faith in God and ask. Have faith in God and say, do you believe I am? The ability is not with you. See, you will, if you are asking basis your ability, basis your righteousness, basis what you have done for Jesus, you will ask wrong. And religion says, what did you do for Jesus that you can ask him these big things? Did you do Aisa kya? Tune kuch kya? Did you pray? Again, let's come back to the two blind men in Matthew 9. What a wonderful example. All they said, do you, they asked, son of David, have mercy on me. And here Jesus gives only one question to all of us, like he's giving to them. Do you believe I am able to do this? I am the great I am. Do you think the great I am can do this? Do you believe? He didn't say anything. Do you believe? Do you believe? He didn't ask any other questions. And today the same question is relevant with faith. Do you believe I am able to do this? How mat pucho? Who put you? I am. He didn't say, do you know how I can do this? Do you know, am I qualified? And that is what the Lord is asking us. So when you ask the Lord, you know what Satan does, he brings in qualification. Hey, but hey, listen, last month you didn't put tithes. Uh, or you didn't go to church for the last four Sundays. You're not ready your word. You are already qualified. And that's why Jesus says, do you believe I am? Who is able to do this? I am is able to to do this. Not you, not me. All Jesus' wa wants is our agreement. What they replied? Two words. Yes, Lord. And what we do in prayer? Yes, Lord. I, I believe you are able to do Yes, Lord. Jesus is saying, okay, do you believe I am able to turn around the situation here? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It is the easiest, yes, the most difficult to say yes, Lord, because after yes, Lord, if there's a but, that's not a, but Lord, you know, I am a sinner. Don't do all those prayers. You're not impressing heaven. You know, the kya hai? speech, de ke, what do you think? Jesus gets shaken. Kya speech diya, yaar? 300 words ka speech. Diya. No, two words. Yes, Lord. Two words. Yes, Lord. Two words. Yes, Lord. And today I'm going to share with you two words. Yes, Lord. Like Jesus started with three words. Have faith, sorry, four words, have faith in God. And here Jesus leads us with two words. Yes, Lord. So this is one of the examples, you know, that uh, we see. Let's quickly go to Acts. I'm going fast because we have done this twice. Acts 14, this is just revision. Acts 14 verse 7. Here is, this is the, the story of Paul and the and the lame man at Lystra, they were preaching. We'll start 7, verse 7, first, Acts 14, verse 7. And they were preaching the gospel there. Praise God, they were preaching the gospel there, the gospel. We know what Romans 1 talks about, the gospel is the power to save. Amen. They were preaching the gospel there. And in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb. Who had never walked. This man heard Paul speaking. This man heard Paul speaking. This man heard Paul speaking. Faith comes by hearing. This man heard Paul speaking. 
and all of you who say you know what faith i'm not i don't have enough this man you man i man heard hear what god is saying the more you hear the more you hear the more the faith will build the more you hear the word of god you know what the word of god is going to do is inject inside of your life that's why john 6 says my words are spirit ruha and life you are a spirit man you need to eat spirit food right so spirit feeds on spirit when my spirit man eats the word of god which is living and breathing and moving and sharper than any two edged sword what it does it feeds my spirit more my spirit is fed the more my spirit gets stronger and it talks to myself and says look 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 this is not the time to now not believe see the stronger one wins in the arm wrestling correct if your spirit is not fed even though it's perfect it may not be able to wrestle with your mind which your mind looks at the surrounding are yaar tu to pray kar raha hai but tera bank balance dekh yaar tera dost log ko dekh your spirit says look at the word of god what do you do you say amen to the spirit put your eyes in the word and eat this man heard paul speaking paul observing him intently and seeing that he had the faith to be healed how did this man get the faith to be healed he heard paul speaking he heard and i don't know how long paul preached but paul was known to preach very long so maybe days maybe i don't know but he heard mere our sermon to us you hear what you have to hear hear what the word of god says not what the world is telling you ye nahi hoga are sabke sath aisa hi hota hai ye this all this all rubbish don't don't go here sorry i'm going straight i'm not going to you know fancy out this thing don't waste time with rubbish i tell my children don't waste time with rubbish right because end may rubbish kaega rubbish banega you spend time with the word of god you go read lord what do you are saying about this situation what are you saying father about this your word is spirit and life i need life it feels the world is telling me is dead and gone i need life so what i do i heard and with a loud voice you you know again i'll come back to verse 9 yes lord seeing that he this man who was crippled had faith to be healed look when he heard he had the faith it was not paul's faith it was not paul having a special power no it is and he said to the lord was stand up straight on your feet and he leapt and walked all paul had to to give him that you know nudge of faith and this man walked so amen hallelujah so we did a quick recap recap took 23 minutes praise god let us go to john i want to show you a blessing in believing i'll take to john 20 a fantastic chapter i'm going to show you john 20 first 24 to 29 is about thomas let's read with me i'm reading from new king james version it says now thomas called the twin one of the 12 was not with them when jesus came the other disciples therefore said to him we have seen the lord he said to them unless i see his hands and the print of his nails and put my fingers in the print of his nails and put my hand into his side i will not believe they said the man in listra crippled at this moment had more faith than thomas because he never saw jesus here the, the disciples of jesus these are the 12 or the 11 who are telling thomas hey the lord we seen the lord he didn't say yeah wow praise god thank you you saw no i don't believe right no i don't unless i see with my eyes he wants see wants to see with his eyes right after eight days and jesus didn't come immediately ki abhi main thomas ko dikhayega ki main hai eight days he made it after eight days his disciples were again inside and thomas and thomas and thomas with them jesus came the doors being shut stood in the midst and said <laughs> jesus can walk through doors that's glorified you know you want to know what your glorified body will be like see the resurrected jesus in john see the resurrected he, uh, he, he see wo, the glorified body that jesus has we will have okay jesus came the doors being shut stood in the midst and said you know what jesus i love this words that jesus peace to you because now they were scared are bhai bina door khol ke andar aa gaya peace to you and he said to thomas what he said to thomas reach your finger here and look at my hands 
reach your hand here and put it into my side. Don't be, do not be unbelieving, but believing. Jesus didn't say be a believer and unbeliever. He said be not, do not be unbelieving. He, this believing is more, less a cliche. I am a believer. Nay, nay, nay. I am a believing. What is God? Jesus saying? This is more like a verb. This is believing. And what Jesus didn't, he didn't say, and praise God, Jesus, Jesus didn't leave it. He says, just, he didn't say just believe. Believing. And the reason it is written in this word, in the Bible, every word is God ordained. I am a believer of this and I am believing. He said believe because he wants it to be continuous every day, every moment. Because every time the Satan is looking for an opportunity to make you do not be unbelieving. And now that is the fight. That's that's what daddy was talking about. The good fight of faith. Believing, unbelieving. Believing, unbelieving. Be and that's the fight. Because Thomas could not see Jesus. He didn't want to trust the words of his friends or his his. These guys were together for a very long time. He saw Jesus feeding the 5,000. He saw Jesus, uh, you know, Thomas was there when, when, when Jesus turned water into wine. Thomas was there when Jesus fed 5,000. Thomas was there when Lazarus, you know, he said, come, let's go die with him. <laughs> he was that kind of guy. So he saw when Lazarus resurrected. Do you think miracles cause fate to come? Think again. Think again. Think again. People are saying if the world sees miracles, they'll believe. Really? Think again. Faith comes by hearing. Faith does not come by seeing only. Hearing. Hearing. If faith came by seeing, these 12 wouldn't have to go through what they went. That's why they heard. That's why Jesus came back. You know why? He didn't He didn't resurrect and straight go to the Father and like, you know, Mera kaam ho gaya nahi. he came back and actually started teaching them. He spent those 50 days talking. Luke says he opened the word of God back to them because he knew faith comes by hearing. He knew he had to speak to them. This is Jesus who has just done what the father has asked him to do resurrected right paid for my sins he is he's done the the impossible but guess what it's like the work is not done for jesus saying like yeah i got to talk to them because they hearing and hearing they believe jesus after resurrected didn't do any miracles but he just spoke he spoke, he spoke because the biggest miracle is hear and hear and what we say that's why he opened the word of god right and that's why he comes to meet Thomas because he loves Thomas. But let's not pray like, like Jesus till I see you, I won't believe he won't come. You'll be stuck. Because the Bible clearly says the just shall live by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. If you're waiting to see God, I, I, I don't know. I'm not going to say anything further than that. Right? And Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Obviously, na, now... <laughs> and Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. And now I want to share with you the blessing. How, how many are ready for the blessing? Come on, say, I'm ready to be blessed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. That is the blessing of faith. Blessed are those. That's why Jesus and the word and Romans and all the scripture says, we walk by faith and not by sight. You know, when we walk by faith, there's a blessing. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Even though you don't see and believe, blessed are you. Who is telling you blessed? Jesus, the creator, the blesser, is saying you are blessed. Why are you blessed? Why are you blessed? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. Let us quickly go to Galatians 3 and then we'll talk, talk about asking. I just wanted to show you the blessing in believing. When people tell you, Arey, but nay, there's a blessing now. Now I've given you another incentive. Jesus has given the incentive. Every time you say, I believe, yet I don't see it. I believe I'm strong. I believe I'm prosperous. I believe, you know, this is my, I mean, I'm not seeing it, but blessed is me who believe and not seen that. Go back to John 20. Take that verse because that blessing is for you. Because when Jesus was looking at Thomas saying, Yar, you see, you saw this, so you believed. Obviously, na? correct, no? You see, then usme kya faith chahiye? Wo natural hai. Right? Amen. Let's come back to Galatians chapter 3. Hallelujah. 
Look at how God instilled faith inside Abraham and his that blessing is uh, this is another blessing on believing. I'm sharing with you. Galatians 3, we start from verse 8, go up to verse 9. It says, And the scriptures foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith. See, that's me. Foreseeing even before anything happens. See, God works in faith. Foreseeing. Foreseeing. Pahile hi foreseeing. Dekha nahi hai. Foreseeing. He for God also in his in in himself he sees you saved he sees you prosperous he sees you uh, working and doing what even when you are acting weird and not as per his purpose he still says this is my son I say he's holy right that's why we confess I am the righteousness of God in Christ when we sometimes behave not like the righteousness why. We just line up with our faith God who is faithful. He who called us is faithful. He is faithful. We line up with him and say, the, maybe currently I'm not behaving like who I am, but I know who I am because I, my actions don't make me, me make my actions. I'm going to say that again. Religion will tell you just because you are a Christian, you got to act a certain way. You got to speak. Are you a believer? Why are you angry? No, no, no. I am a believer. My anger or not anger doesn't change the fact that I am the son of God. Right? Me being in the desert, looking at stones, doesn't change the fact that if you are the son of God, Satan said to Jesus, change. He, he didn't change nothing. He said, you know, whether food there or not, whether geography, whether I'm in the desert or I'm at the wedding of Cana, I am. I will always be the son of God. I don't need to do something to prove to you who I am because I am. I know who I am. And the, the Lord is telling you, you don't need to do. So if you're walking in faith and believing for something to prove to somebody that you are a Christian, stop it. James talks about that's a wrong motive. You are already blessed. You don't need to prove to the world that you are a Christian. You know it. Praise God. Heaven knows it. Praise God. Just have fun with it. Khatam. Don't need to go proving to people. Make Christian. Islam. Mera paas ye. Nahin, nahin, nahin. Who asked you to do that? Nobody's asking you. Jesus didn't succumb to that. Satan's first temptation is if you are the son of God, prove it by your actions. Satan still doesn't. You are really, 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 really. You are Christian. Why are you going through this? I am a, the son of God. These things around me don't matter because they are temporal, because I can see them. Amen. Come on, let's come back to Galatians 3, 8. And the scriptures forcing that God would justify the Gentiles. How? By faith. No wonder it's Sunday after Sunday, it's faith. Monday after Monday, is faith. How you are justified? By faith. You know what is the opposite of faith? Works of the law. Opposite of faith is works of the law. Like, I have done good work, I am a good boy, hai, and now Jesus blessed me. Why, brother, you God? And some people give this testimony. You know, I prayed and I fasted and I stormed heaven. I like, really, bro? Look at yourself. And heaven is like, come on. Let's, let's get the perspective right. You can storm nothing, right? And don't try storming anybody. All you got to do is rest back and in faith. You know, faith is, Lord, you have justified me even before I have born. My God calls me righteous. My call calls, calls me justified. All I say to my God, yes, Lord, like these two blind men. Yes, Lord. You know, all you have to do is pick up this Bible, read it to yourself and say, yes, Lord. Mm, ah, done. Yes, Lord. Don't go for the long, big KJV prayers. Thou, O Lord. And then, no, no, no. yes, Lord. He's the Lord is my shepherd. Yes, Lord. I will say of the Lord, He is my He, he is my God, He's my refuge. Yes, Lord. The Lord is my help. Yes, Lord. He's saying, just say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. And preached what? The gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, look the word saying. God is also preaching. God preached to Abraham. And actually, this is he's talking about Genesis 15. God preached to Abraham. God had to speak faith into Abraham. And this, as he's doing it, Abraham is also doing it to us through the word. Right? And what he told, what he preached to Abraham, praise God. You know, when God, when the gospel is preached, it's, it's always about blessing. It's never about curses. 
and god all the time spoke to abraham about blessing him about being his shield about being his reward about being everything for him i am your reward i am your shield look at what god told abraham he never told him to lene ke even though he fell with ishmael he still remembered the you know he even blessed ishmael he says i blessed ishmael who read it who read the story of abraham right and don't worry if you have done some mistakes god is there to help you out go back to him don't try to fix it you can't ask the lord to help you right in or in you all nations shall be. see this is what the gospel god preached to abraham in you abraham all the nations shall be blessed all the nations everybody so then those who are of faith are blessed with believing abraham it is a believed abraham believing abraham had to believe this line of uh, genesis 15 even when he fell out and had ishmael he had to still believe that god is my blesser i am blessed and yes he will multiply me i know the time is over i am 100 years old my wife is 90 but but god has blessed me and romans 4 talks about it so you can study so what i wanted to show you is the blessing in believing so then those who are of faith are blessed so why jesus said have faith in god why jesus saying have faith because he knows there's a blessing in it have faith in god and and say even though you do can't see it happen say even though you don't see it happen say even though you don't see it happen you say you say what the word of god has to say hallelujah let's come now very important point is in acts uh, sorry in mark Uh, Mark Mark eleven twenty four. Jesus says, "Therefore I say to you, whatever things again you ask when you pray, ask when these are two things. Ask when you pray. So I'm going to take the asking part today, and let's see if we have time to go to the praying part. These are two power dynamites. They 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 come together. Ask when you pray." ask when you pray believe that you receive when you are praying you already say lord i receive it and then you just go with it i am a i am don't worry lord i believe i you just say i believe. and those who are like minded people of faith you say you know this is what i'm believing god hallelujah don't go tell everybody you should if you, you just be like elizabeth she hid herself you know i like the story of elizabeth she hid herself when she was pregnant with john the baptist you know everybody called her the the barren one her name had become the barren one like a nickname elizabeth are kaun sa wala chahiye are the barren wala like that you know very bad so what she did she hid herself you you are pregnant with the word hide go hide yourself you talk to yourself you preach to yourself you are a company you know who's agreeing with you nobody agrees with you jesus is he saying i i am agreeing with you come on heaven is agreeing with you don't need everybody to agree with you it's all right jesus is saying i am with two i am with you we are two or three sometimes jesus is saying i am your two you know with the verses say two or three are gathered in my name and if you don't find a two jesus says i am there for you i am your two so he is the amen you when you say amen you are actually calling on to jesus you just pregnant with with that desire and you can hide yourself people may not understand they may call you crazy doesn't matter they even thought elizabeth was crazy right because how so old person they thought abraham was crazy pagal ho gaya kaisa bol raha abraham is father of nations kaisa bol raha buddha pagal ho gaya don't matter doesn't matter you go you hide you take the word of god all god needs is you he doesn't need the crowd and every miracle that happened you know jesus spoke to the person in need he didn't speak to everybody jarius he spoke to jarius he spoke to blind bartimaeus he spoke to the person in need right and you and jesus make a formidable team hallelujah so you don't need anybody you and jesus are the majority baki ka pata nahi mereko so let's come back to the asking part uh hallelujah where was i lord oh jesus Okay, Matthew chapter six. Matthew chapter six. Okay, sorry, we'll go to the asking part. Matthew chapter seven. Matthew chapter seven. Keep and verse seven. Ask, and it will be given to you. Matthew seven says, "Ask." What is the word? If you are at home and you can say with me, say, "Ask." Come on, tell yourself, "Ask," and it. will be no two ways about it this verse is like you know i read in my bible jesus says no two ways about it it's like done did done jesus says you ask and it will be given to you now don't mix theology and ask ask he said jesus said ask and it will be given unto you seek seek and search his word and you will find what you're looking for knock 
and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks with an S, ask continues, receives everyone. Praise Jesus. Jesus didn't put any qualifiers here. And this, you know, the, the Lord Jesus, this is the great sermon on the mount of, of uh, the Beatitudes for priesthood. So Jesus preaches very, the longest sermon of Jesus is documented in the book of Matthew. He starts at five and goes up to seven and eight. This is long. And after this, that leper comes says, Lord, if you are willing, right? So, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. You will. He says, not you may. Ask and you will or you may. Religion comes and says, may. Ho sakta hai. If it, you know what? There is one thing that I've always seen is when people are not aligned with you in faith, I have noticed this happened to me. I don't want to tell you about it, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. Not everything, just they always told me, is it the will of God? And I was asked, believing for something. I went and told somebody and said, this is what me and Sari are believing for. And they said, um, yeah, it's all right, but let God's will be done. And I realized that that guy is not standing in faith with me. So what me and Sari did, we hid ourselves back. We stopped telling people. And guess what? When it happened, we, we had a party. Okay, ask and it will be given to you because ask and it will be given. And this verse is work. Ask and it will be given to you. You know, when that party happened, everybody rejoiced, right? Praise God for that. Okay, I'm not going to tell about it more. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks, for everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds and uh, and to him who knocks is be open to you now look at the wonderful example jesus is going to give oh what man is among you if his son asks for bread give him a stone we don't do this right we don't do this if he asks for a fish <coughs> will he give him a serpent if you then being evil evil is not being good okay at that time jesus was preaching to these guys he could not had not yet died for them for their sins so till jesus had not died we all were evil praise god now we are not know how to give good gifts to your children pause take a break jesus is putting this in family perspective he said son children son and he goes on to say which of you among you, if his son means father's son, father's son, what Jesus is putting into perspective, asking is, is a family right. Your asking is not a religion right. It's a family right. It's a God. You're born of God. You have the right to ask your father. He's not shy about it. Why are you? Right. That's how faith works. Faith works. Faith demands that whatever grace has made for me, it's mine. I'm not going to look at my neighbor. You have what's yours. What is mine is mine. And this is what the Lord is saying. Ask, man, what do you want? Ask. And even when you're asking, I will give you the verse that will help you. Hallelujah. Right. Oh, what's the time? Time is it? Right. If you then being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more? Will your father, he didn't say my father. This is this is a, Jesus' father, but he says, Tera pita, your father. How much more your father? He quickly telling me your father, your father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask him. He will give good things to those who ask him. <coughs> he will give good things to those who ask him. Good father gives good things to those who ask him. You know, asking is an action of faith because you believe him, because you trust him, because you know that he is the one to help you. You ask him first. He may involve other family members by bringing another brother in Christ or another human being. He'll use who he wants to to make sure that his son, guess what? He's asking for, right? Hallelujah. You know, and then we say, is like, uh, how can I ask? Let me quickly take you, before I give you the answer, how can I ask? I want to take you to Luke. I want to take you the same verses in Luke. The good gift. I want to show you the good gift that God has given us. Luke 11, verse 13. Luke 11, verse 13. So it's the same thing. He says, if you ask an egg, he gives offers a scorpion. So, you know, Jesus is telling the same thing. 
And then he says in verse 13, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. Now, what is the good gift God has given us? The Holy Spirit. How do I ask? I ask by the power of the Holy Spirit. I say, Holy Spirit, pray through me. Help me to ask. Help me to ask. Help me to ask. You know, when you pray using the word of God and when you pray with the help of the Holy Spirit, you will ask what's pleasing to the Father. And there's nothing that you will ask that's not pleasing to the Father. Trust me. Trust the Holy Spirit to pray and say, Lord, this is what I want. And it's okay. You know, I have three children and sometimes they're, they're small. They're growing. They have some of the ask is very ridiculous. Really. Like kids, they ask anything. But they ask, no. And what I did, I said, hey, to kya puchha chal, ghar mein mata. You're not a son anymore. Go away. Ha, kya puchha chal. We, we just laugh. We have fun. It's the same thing, no. Why will God disown you? Ki kya puchha isne? Are, he will teach you. And he will show you, this is what you ask. Praise God. He, you know what? He'll get so excited and work with you. And you'll be like, Lord, thank you for showing me. Thank you. Come on. He's your heavenly father. He, he's not embarrassed with your asking. Why are you embarrassed to ask? Because you don't see him as father. You see him as God with a big stick who's going to whack you on your head if you ask. No, no. He's a heavenly father. Let me show you one more verse. In Romans 8.31. Romans 8.31. I am looking at the time. Praise God. Romans 8.31. Come on. Romans 8.31. What shall we say to all these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. Verse 32 then. He who did not spare his own son. Pause. Take a break. God, Heavenly Father, gave us Jesus. He gave us everything. He Actually, they go to say he bankrupted heaven because Jesus is everything. So what do you think? Your bills and your fancy car that you like or that aeroplane ride that you want or that holiday that you're looking at or the big house you're believing, you think that can bankrupt heaven when he gave you Jesus? You know, why am I talking like this is don't get scared to ask. Don't get scared to talk to the Father. Lord, this is what I like. You Come on, right? Hallelujah. He says, you know what? He did not spare his own son, but delivered him for us, for us all. How shall he not with him freely give us all things? How shall he? How shall he not with him give us freely give us all things? Now you may say, you know, I don't know how to pray. I don't know how to ask. I, I'm just going to take you through two verses and then and we're going to close. Philippians 4.13. Philippians 4.13. I said this on Sunday. I'm going to say it again. I can do all things. All things includes asking. Philippians 4.13. You know, we use this verse and generally I use this verse for a lot of physical activity. Like, you know, and I restricted this verse to that. No, I can do all things. I can cycle. I can, I can do all things and I can study. And, and I never use this verse in the, in the place that I can do. I can read my Bible through Christ who strengthens me. I can pray. I can do all things, right? All things is all things. I can do. Praying is a doing word. It's a verb, right? I can I can do Bible study. I can do all things, anything. I can ask the Father. Is a, it's a verb. Asking is a verb. I can do all things. I can do all things. You know what happens is when you feel that you cannot ask the Father, go to this verse. It's not that he's holding up. It's you who's not having the strength to ask him. You know why? Dar lag raha hai. Kya hai bolega yaar? Dar lag raha hai. Our humanity and our religion comes alive. Kya aap maang raha hai? Paagal hai gaya. Chup bet. Kya ke baita chup chup. Paanch rupiah, das rupiah maang. Kya hai? What is this? If you can ask God that you can provide yourself, you don't need faith. If I'm praying, Lord bless me with 2,000 rupees. Lord bless me. Sarita will just come and give it. Take Baba 2,000. Stop the prayer. Right? So, Come on, I can do all things. And my Bible, I've all is capital. All I've written in my notes is believing. I can, I can ask, I can pray, I can read the scriptures. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Through Christ who strengthens me. And ask Christ, Jesus, strengthen me to ask. And he's there so that you ask, right? I want to go to 2 Timothy 2, 1. This verse caught my attention, right? And you don't have strength. I'm going to give you another verse for strength. It says, you therefore, my son, 
I, I even though Paul is writing to Timothy, I think the I firmly believe and I, I, I'm convinced because when he says my son, I can say me. Therefore, like God is writing, you know, my son. Therefore, my son, Alistair, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Be strong in the grace. He's saying use the grace that is available in Christ Jesus and ask. You know what? Grace is already made available. Jesus said it is finished, it is done. Right? Jesus said it is finished. So why quit the quit the struggle? That's why next time we'll talk about be anxious for nothing. Right? So Jesus is saying, ask. Ask. Right? Ask. I'm going to you know talk about a verse that was spoke on the Sunday. The Lord asked me to speak help you understand this verse. Second Timothy 5, 8 says, but if anyone does not provide for his own and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith. And the Lord asked me to stop here and talk about he has denied the faith. You know what the Lord is saying? Go back to asking me. You have denied the faith in my love and you're trying to provide for your family on your own. Don't do this. Take the Lord load off you. See, Jesus, Jesus is the Lord of all. You are the head of your house. Yes, that's right. But he said he has denied the faith. What do you have denied? You have denied saying nahi. Deny is nahi bolne ka. Nahi. Right? When somebody, nahi. Deny is to say nahi. Like what Peter did? Peter denied Jesus. Said, nahi, nahi, nahi. Right? You denied the faith. You denied the belief in his love and said, no, I will do on my own. So what the Lord is saying, when you do that, is worse than an unbeliever, right? Because then you're trying to do by sight. Like you're being Thomas. You're saying, Lord, may karega. May apna family ka take care. Go back. If anyone does not provide for his own, say, Lord, I want to provide for my family. And I ask you, can, can this be part of your asking prayer? Yes, it can be. I want to provide for my family. I want to bless my family. And Lord, I have faith in your love. You'll help me. Show me how take me to the right place you lord you know what's inside of me lead me to opportunities come on this is don't deny the faith don't deny the belief in god that's why you know if i had to take this verse and i had time i would actually bring it back to mark 11 he says have faith in god and don't deny god this is what paul is saying this is what paul is telling timothy don't he's telling you know what he's trying to tell the church but don't deny god don't deny don't try on your own has denied the faith. Denies to say no. Peter denied Jesus. Say no, 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 I don't know him. No, no, this is what we do like Peter. No, I don't know whether he can provide for my family. So what we do is, if anyone does not provide for his own, especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith. What the Lord is saying, don't deny the faith. Come in faith to me. Lord, I want to do this. That's why we come back to what I can do all things. I can take care of my family. I can provide for my family. I can be a blessing. All things, na? All things, bola. All things through Christ. Lord, because you give me strength, Lord, I can be a blessing. Now show me. Amen. I just want to leave you with one last verse. Matthew 6, 7 and we'll go. Then we'll come into the prayer. We'll talk about praying because Mark 11, 24 is not yet over. We have to come and see how to pray. And trust me, it's, it's so simple, man. It's, it's very simple. And so Mark, Matthew 6, verse 7 says, And when you pray, don't use vain reputation. Please, Lord, please, Lord, please, Lord, please, please, Jesus, please, please. Vain reputations. You know, he, first time only he heard you. And why is please, please, why are you saying? Please, why ask karna. Jesus, I ask you. Ask in Jesus' name. Come on. Right? You see, I, I when you saw, go, go to Acts 14, you didn't see anywhere, even with Jesus. You know, I'm just going to take you. Oh, Father. Let us go. <laughs> okay. Let us go and see Jesus, what he did when feeding the 5,000. What he did. You right? Uh, oh, okay. No, I think I'll take you better to... John chapter where Jesus, oh, this is out of syllabus. Just give me a minute. Death of Lazarus. I want to show you the prayer of Jesus at the grave of Lazarus. Right? And I want to show you how Jesus prayed. Okay? Verse 41. This is Jesus praying. And you look at the prayer and that's what Jesus is teaching us in Mark uh, Matthew 6. It says, Father... 
what he said did he say dear lord oh heavenly na father dear father me nahi father relationship father i thank you you have heard me that is a demanding asking prayer because of the relationship he is teaching us daddy has heard me he did say please father if it is your will bring lazarus out lord you know lazarus was a nice guy he fed me oh lord no long prayers with jesus look at he he knows the authority you are the same authority jesus as father i thank you you i thank you you have heard me and i love this you know i mimic this prayer and there's nothing wrong because jesus jesus praying i said father i thank you you have heard me and i know that you always hear me kya wonderful line hai. and i know that you always hear me but because of the people who are standing i said that they, they may believe you have sent me he is like are in lok ke liye bol rahe hain i know you always hear me i know you always hear me and that's why when jesus teaches about prayer in matthew 6 he says when you pray don't use vain repetition no vain repetition in jesus prayer no when no please god please well did give he didn't try to explain to god the importance of lazarus and how nice lazarus was and who jesus is he did say you know jesus father i am your son the only begotten son nai kuch nahi father when i say father heaven stands at attention is because the son is speaking when i say father and when you say father the angels stand at attention because the son of the living god has spoken and father i thank you you always hear me his ears are on my he's tuned to me i don't need to scream i don't need to go into a posture as a father and his yes son and all the heavens standing in attention what does this boy need next and a father says get the get it get it done for my son right he says when you pray don't use vain repetition as the heathens do we are not heathens for they think that they will be heard for their many words <laughs> verse eight therefore do not be like them for your father knows again your father knows the things that you need that you have need of before you ask him see before you ask him he knows what you need but pray in this manner that's why verse 9 i just took part of it in this manner therefore pray therefore pray he didn't say because your father knows what you need don't pray he says therefore pray let's read again for your father knows the things you have need of before you so you know father you know what i need i ask you in jesus name i pray father in heaven hallowed be your name is like give him praise father i thank you lord this is my request but you know what you know what is better so lord i just give you my request and i thank you you see how it works in this manner prayer our father in heaven hallowed be your name amen and matthew 11 24 therefore i say to you whatever things you ask when you pray believe you receive them and you will not may not me be you may nay you will or not might you will have them jesus is affirmative about you having what you want are you ask him ask him for strength and he will help you thank you for coming see you next monday god bless you